So you know that I talk to a lot of boutique owners all the time. That's basically who I hang out with 24 seven. And there's three things that I'm seeing are the most common issues that are really holding boutique owners back right now. And it's kind of the same thing over and over. And it might not be what you think. So I want you to stay tuned here live with me right now. If you're watching the replay, say hi. If you're joining me live, also please say hello. Tell me who you are, where you're checking in from. Um, as you know, I love to get to know everyone <laughs> that comments that says hi. Um, and this is an important topic right now because you have so much runway right now to figure out what's going on in your business that you can adjust. The coolest part about having a small boutique is that you can constantly be adjusting. You can constantly be making changes and upgrading and doing more and doing different. And I think these tips tonight are going to give you a really good idea of some definitely some things that you can start doing tomorrow when you open your store again or tonight, who knows, maybe you're online and you want to post something tonight. Um, if we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Emily Benson. I am a boutique coaching consultant, retail educator, host of the Booster Boutique podcast, best-selling author of Ultimate Boutique Handbook, and the host of the Rich Retailer Retreat that's coming up next week in Austin. Next, not next week. Oh God. It's next month in Austin, Texas, uh, March 22nd to the 24th. And we just went to see the hotel today. I'm so pumped. Um, I'm like re pumped up about it, but I want to share this inside my Facebook group. Um, if you're a member of that group, give me some hearts. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of people that watch that are members. Uh, I'm going to share it in there. It's called the fashion truck tribe, right? Post. Um, the Fashion Truck Tribe, you can find it just by searching right here on Facebook. The Fashion Truck Tribe, it'll pop up. We're having lots of great conversations in there. I'm getting so many hearts. Thanks, you guys. Um, okay, so I'm just going to share it over in there, and then I'm going to get into this topic. You know me. I like to share. Thanks for saying hi, Jennifer, Sadie, Morgan, Megan, Jen. Hi, you guys. Hi, Victoria. Uh, okay, so here's the deal. Trends that I'm seeing, as always, I have my notes. So here's the thing. There are very common mistakes that I'm seeing boutique owners make, and they're easy fixes, you guys. Like, that's the thing. You know I talk all the time about margins and mindset, and, like, honestly, there are some things that are happening right now in the boutique industry that I think are giving, like, success... Women who are having consistently um, revenue-generating months, you know, 8, 10, 20, 40... 80, 90 K months. There's things that are very true about many of them that I think if you're there or you're not there, you can probably learn from. So I want to share these things with you. Okay. So first of all, these women have a plan. Okay. This is something personally I struggle with is having some kind of vision, some kind of plan. And for me, I'm really good at like three to six months. Like ask me what I'm going to be doing, what I'm launching, what's happening. Like I pretty much can tell you, right? A lot of us don't plan more than like six months out, more than eight months out, nine months out. And what I'm finding is that some of the most successful boutiques are really planning for like the next year or two, at least. And if they're not planning for a year or two, they at least have a vision of like three to five years where they want to be. Okay. And with that vision, with that plan, it's actually written down. It's actually solid. There's actually numbers behind it. There's actually goals behind it. And I think so many of us, myself included, honestly, at times, we get really worried to put a plan in place because we think, well, what if we fail? What if we don't hit those numbers? What if that doesn't happen? And here's the thing. What I see so often is people come storming into the fashion truck tribe. They're like, well, I'm starting online and then I want to open a mobile boutique. Then I want to open a brick and mortar or, hey, I'm a brick and mortar and I want to open an online boutique. But we don't have a plan to get there or we don't have like a realistic plan to get there. So here's the thing. I want to encourage you guys to sit this week. It's still the beginning of the year. Might as well keep saying happy new year. It's just turned 2019. And I want to encourage you to write a plan down. Okay. I don't care what kind of business you have. Write a plan down. This is so important and it's a huge thing. Tell me in the comments, do you have a plan for like six to 18 months out? 
one year to two year out? Do you really have a plan? And, and is it written down? Is there numbers attached to it? Is there, you know, a, a vision behind it? Is there a feeling? Is there intention? What is there? Or are you just thinking, well, I have clothes and I need to sell them, so I'm just gonna keep selling my clothes. <laughs> Because here's the thing, a lot of us are like that. We think, well, we have something started, we just have to maintain it and keep it, and then it will grow. Mm, kind of, sort of, not really. Right. Thomas, so honest, I love you. You say you have no plan. Thank you for your honesty. I love that. Stephanie says, nope, I definitely need to. Jen says, I have a vision, I wouldn't say a plan, but now I'm going to. Awesome. Um, Fatima says, nope, I don't. Sadie says she has a plan through 2019, but could be more detailed. Love that, I love that. We can always be more detailed because here's the thing, when we don't plan, we plan to fail. Period, end of story. And that could be for something as little as planning for the week, but also planning for the big picture. So many of us get stressed out because we think like, oh, we shouldn't plan because what if X, Y, and Z happens? Well, I'm gonna challenge you to dream bigger. I'm gonna challenge you to think bigger. I have a plan through 2021 and I have a business plan attached to it. I have a vision attached to it for this business that I promote all the time, right? I know exactly where my resources need to go. I know exactly who I need to hire. I know exactly the support I need to be able to get to these goals and to, and yes, there are financial goals attached to them, but there are also just growth plans attached to them, you know? More events, more support here, more growth here, get my YouTube channel to 100,000, you know, things like that. So when you have a plan and you know where you're going, it's just like, we can't get anywhere without our GPS anymore, right? And so if we don't give our business a GPS, at least giving it a direction of where to go, we just, we don't have the backup for it. So Lindsay says, I have some big dreams, now I just need to get it set in stone to back it up. Yeah, exactly, that's the thing. Um, Victoria says she wrote it down, awesome. Yeah, and this is something, honestly, this can be a challenge for a lot of people. And so I don't wanna tell you that this isn't going to be sort of like a hurdle to get over. I'm not gonna tell you this is easy because I do think it is hard. But I think that at least, especially if you're new, having a plan, having that G GPS, we love that, having the GPS turned on for our business is going to help us get places faster with more direction, with more understanding and comprehension of how we are going to get there. Because here's the thing, so many, I've gotten so much reaction. Give me some hearts if you've listened to like episode 304, 305 to 308 of Booster Boutique Podcast. Give me some hearts or some likes if you've listened to those. Those were the ones that were all about metrics for your business, financial, um, uh, uh, your financial analytics, looking at all that stuff. Here's the deal. All of that ties in with the vision, okay? All of that has to be cohesive because if it's not cohesive, if there is a vision with no numbers and there's numbers with no vision, everything just gets kind of screwy. There's no true path, right? You can't use the GPS if you don't have a car and gas in the car. Right? So that's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to encourage you to have this plan, to have this vision, and to start to go down the road to like figure it out. Someone says, I can't fly by the seat of my pants. Listen, there is a time and a place for flying by the seat of your pants, using your intuition, using, you know, I would say using your intuition to grow. Then there's a moment where you're like, I actually need a plan. <laughs> like I actually need to have something set in stone because then here's the thing, you can allow your intuition, you can allow the course of your business. Maybe you see, so using the idea of the GPS, maybe you see a great ice cream stand or maybe you get hungry for food and you need to stop. You know, maybe you need to take a break. Having those, having the plan and then ha seeing other things off the road you allows you, yourself to like stop off the road because you can still see the plan. You still, the GPS is still like, turn around, you turn, you turn, right? So when you have a plan, then you can also do some fun stuff and fly by the seat of your pants, but you can't do one without the other. So number one thing that everyone that I think is successful is doing is they have some kind of plan. Um, 
I needed my fix of you this week. Oh, Ashley, hey. <laughs> Ashley has a plan though. Ashley's in my High Vibe Boutique Mastermind. We've been working on the plan with her. She knows her numbers. She knows where she wants to be. She knows where by the end of this year she wants to get to so that next year she can open more, another store, at least one more, right? We know where she's going. And that's the thing is having that plan with the financials tied to it, so important. So that's tip number one. Okay. Um, tip number two, or the number, the, the other trend I'm seeing that's really holding boutique owners back is thinking that they have to do it all. Thinking that they are the only one that can do everything. Thinking they're, they're the one that has to send the invoices, buy the merchandise, ticket the things, steam the things, post, write the description, post the social media thing. They think that they have to do everything. Here's what I'll tell you. You cannot grow on your own. If you look at any business that's doing 250 to 500,000 to and above, they're not doing it by themselves. They're not. And if you are doing that and you're still doing it by yourself, God bless you, you're exhausted. You must be really tired. This is the thing. There is a point where you will break. There is a point where because you don't have that plan, because you don't know who the next hires are, because you don't know the skill sets you're looking for and those experts and those people to help you, whether it's an employee, an accountant, a coach, um, a social media manager, because you don't have that plan, you're just doing all of it. And because you're doing all of it, you're kind of doing all of it kind of half-assed, excuse my language. Um, but you're kind of doing a shitty job at all of it. Maybe you're really excelling in this one area because you're pumped about it and that's what you put all your energy into, but everything else around you, you're not leaning on other people. Like you have to learn to hire great people and trust them, trust them. You know, I have a great assistant. I just hired someone to do more sales stuff for me, to do more social media stuff. I have another girl that does social media. Like I have three people right now that work with me and they are amazing at what they do. And I know that they have my back so that I can take a day off. You know, after I was in Vegas last week, I was exhausted. And so I was able to say like, hey, we need to cancel this. Hey, can we up this? Hey, can we reach out to these people? And it was done. Like it got done. It wasn't my job to do it though, okay? So this is where we have to start setting you up. This is how you scale. Remember like, so I'm gonna keep talking about this, but it's start, grow, scale, okay? This is how you build a business. You start it. Most of you are in the startup phase. The next phase is to grow it. But in that growth phase, you need to be always thinking scale. How am I scaling? And when I say scale, I mean, how are you getting to those 80, 100, 50, 80, 100, 200K months? You are not going to do that alone. You can't. I, I'm sorry, you can't. Um, and so as you're growing, you need to start thinking about who are the people who are going to help you along the way, okay? And it could be one person here, it could be another person the next couple months, it could be that first person you hired didn't really work, so you're gonna move on, <laughs> you need to find someone else. You know, that's the deal, is that we have to realize that to build a business that is your scaling, you have to hire people. It might take you some time, to get the right people, to get to the right people, but you'll get there, totally. Let me just see some of your comments. You guys are like totally loving this. Okay, Cheryl says I do. Cheryl, you're probably exhausted. <laughs> um, I, was, I was really tired. I'm still like kind of recovering. Um, Ashley says I'm guilty of this. I hired a new girl and she started, you can't grow and not have help. Yeah, you can't, you can't. Especially if you have a brick, and, Ashley has a brick and mortar store. If you're a brick and mortar, you can't do this by yourself. Sadie says, I have an accountant, hired an assistant a few months ago and hired a friend to do, I don't know what they're doing spreadsheets for. Um, awesome, we have to hire. Tracy said, she broke down and hired an accountant. Awesome, I'm hiring a new accountant too. So I'm gonna build a website and a friend to help with stuff, great. Um, when did it click that I needed help? So you know when you need help, when you're exhausted all the time, <laughs> when you can't keep up, when you think like, oh my God, I shoulda, coulda, woulda done all these things today, but I didn't, okay? It's more of like a bandwidth issue. You know, bandwidth is something a lot of corporate people talk about. Like, oh, we don't have the bandwidth to do that. 
when you don't have the bandwidth, it means like you just don't have the capacity to do that. You don't have um, the physical, mental, emotional space to be able to handle everything that's on your plate. And so what I always suggest doing when you want to hire someone, write down all the things that you hate doing <laughs> or you don't like doing or you don't feel like doing and um, find someone who's better at it than you. I would tell you, like the people I've hired, they're better at what I've hired them to do than I am necessarily. So, and I'm really good at a lot of things. I really, you know, I know I'm smart. I know I'm capable, but at the end of the day, I can't scale a business. I can't grow it to where I want it to be by myself, period, right? So, okay. So hopefully that helps give you an idea of how to start hiring people. And then I think it's about manifesting the right people. We t I talk about this in Six Figure Blueprint all the time. I think I've talked about it in bootcamp, but, um, and I have a podcast about this. I have a podcast about how to hire employees. I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure. <laughs> Can someone confirm that? I'm pretty sure I have a podcast. I mean, I have like 60 plus podcasts now, so I better. Um, Victoria said, are you gonna do another meetup at the next magic? I don't know, Victoria. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, it's a long way away. Like I said, I'm not great at planning. Things like that that don't require a ton of work. Um, things. Things that don't require a ton of work, I kind of throw in at the last minute. Things like my retreat that's coming up next month, we've been planning that for months because that's three days with me. There's a hotel involved, there's swag bags, there's food, there's all that stuff. Um, so I don't know about magic, but for sure, the retreat, if you are interested in coming and spending a weekend with me, uh, we still have tickets open for the retreat. So I would love for you to join me. It's here in Austin, Texas, the 22nd to the 24th of March. We have discounted room rates. We're gonna feed you a bunch of food. I'm gonna coach the crap out of you. We're gonna like really up-level your life. All of the things that I'm talking about are things that I'm going to address that weekend. I'm gonna address dealing with having a plan. We're gonna talk about what your vision is. We're gonna talk about what your future is. Um, and we're gonna make it solid. It's gonna be not only your life, but it's going to also be your business. We're gonna combine that stuff. Um, because I don't think one exists without the other. We have to, especially, I know there's men and women watching, but um, I especially think as women, we tend to think we can do it all and we forget to deal with other things. Like we forget our life or we forget our business or we don't, you know. So I wanna make sure that that's really in a good place before you leave. Um, we're gonna break down the blocks that think that you have to do it all. <laughs> you don't have to do it all, period. Um, and then the last thing that, that really I think is holding a lot of boutique owners back, which we're gonna talk about at the retreat, is not showing your face not showing up in your business, posting and never showing you, never taking pictures with you in it, never doing videos, never using your own voice to write copy. Um, this is a huge problem and it's holding a lot of people back, a lot of people. Um, and so for me, I, I have heard over and over and over, Emily, this is what I hear. How, I'll be like, how's your boutique doing? Well, when I started taking pictures of myself, using myself as a model, or when I started doing more Facebook Lives, or when I started showing up more, my business popped. No joke, I heard it like five times last week when I was at Magic, so many times. And I'm like, why are boutique owners still missing out on the opportunity to show up for their business? Like, this is a problem. You have to start showing up for your business or like you're not gonna have a business. We are living in the age of the internet where I can come on live from Texas, which I saw, hey, someone's in Texas, hi. Um, there are so many people who think they can just not show up. And like, we have a massive opportunity to show up for our people. And we have to show up in the way that feels good for us, right? If you don't love doing video, post pictures of yourself, write great copy. You know, someone was saying to me, they were in this very like direct selling, like LuLaRoe, Agnes and Dora mindset where they're like, well, my group, I hear this from everyone that comes from those companies. They're like, well, my business page is like my, um, my yellow pages listing and my group is where like people get to know me. And I'm like, 
I'm pretty sure you guys all know me here on my business page. I'm pretty sure I pour my heart out at least once or twice a week. And so like this is the opportunity that you have to connect with people. You have the opportunity to actually share your life with people, for them to share it with you, and for like actually to have a community that's in public. Stop hiding in your Facebook group. So many people are asking me about groups and I'm like, just get out of them. Unless their group is great, unless it's doing really well and you're selling a ton in your group, you're missing an opportunity to connect with people in the public eye and be a public figure. Because guess what? When you start a business that connects with consumers, you signed up to be in that position. And if you're uncomfortable with it, you have to either get comfortable with it or hire someone awesome who is like you and put yourself out there. Like you have to. It's the quickest way to grow your business. Sorry, so many of you guys are posting. Kiara, thanks for posting the link, babe. Thank you. Um, you can also just go to richretailerretreat.com too. Um, I'm so excited, Ashley. Eleonora, I live in Austin. You should come to the retreat. It's here in Austin. I'm in Austin. Um, I don't have a business yet. That's okay. It's not. So the thing about the retreat, um, I want to tell you that the retreat is not about, and someone asked, like, should we come with analytics? Like, no, don't, please don't come with business numbers. The retreat is not about looking at your numbers. It's not about, I am not going to teach you how to optimize Pinterest. I am not going to tell you all the things that you should, could, would be doing, okay? I've spent so many times, I've spent so much time at summits and at events and at um, trainings and things like this where I leave feeling like I'm not doing enough. And I leave feeling like, oh my God, I should be doing this person's strategy or why I missed out on that strategy or, oh my gosh, I should, those girls are so successful. I should be doing what they're doing. Wrong, totally wrong. That's not a strategy. Here's the thing, at the retreat, what we're gonna talk about is how to tap into yourself. How to use your inner guidance system to use your brains and your heart, connect them, and develop a plan from there. That feels really good, that feels really aligned, and that honestly, the numbers and everything else behind it will marry, will match up. They'll work out because when you're coming from a space of feeling really good about where you are in your life and your business, there's no stopping you. You will show up. You will have that plan. You will stop thinking that you have to do it all because you'll be like, nope, I wanna help other people. I wanna trust other people to build my business and help build my business for me. So um, that's what the retreat is about. The retreat is about tapping into who you are, who you're meant to be, really busting through some blocks, money blocks. Um, we're gonna talk about money blocks. We're gonna talk about blocks about showing up, being your authentic self. And once we bust down those blocks, we're gonna clear them all with the most beautiful crystal bowl singing um, session. <sighs> we're gonna have a crystal bowl healing. It's gonna be amazing. And then we're gonna start to dig into like, what do you want your life to look like? What do you want your business to look like? How are we gonna get there? How's it gonna feel good? How's it not gonna stress you out? How's it gonna feel like you have time to be with your kids? Go on vacation, do all that stuff. What does that feeling in your body feel like? Because that is very different than me looking at your numbers and saying, you should do this and this. And that's very different than you guys all asking me, I need more followers. You don't need more followers. You need to tap into yourself. You need to understand who you really are and how are you gonna show up in the world as this new beautiful boutique owner or maybe experienced boutique owner that you are. What does that look like for you? What does that feel like for you? Let's tap into that. Let's get on that frequency rather than living in the frequency of, I don't have enough money. How am I gonna do this? I have to do everything myself. I'm up until two in the morning. I send all the invoices. Oh, I should go to this, I should do that. No, nope, 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 nope. We are going to go really deep and I'm excited about it. This is the work I love to do. It's absolutely amazing to do in person. Absolutely amazing to do with someone like me who's been trained in so much spiritual work, so much personal development work. If you don't know, I'm like a Reiki level two trained spiritual teacher. Um, and I just happen to also be a business brainiac about retail and boutiques. <laughs> so that is where the retreat comes in. So um, what do I mean write copy, asked Fatima. Um, to write copy, so like write a post. 
like so many people post a picture of an item and then they go, isn't this shirt so cute? And then they post the link. What a great shirt for date night. No, like write something, like give me some romance copy, you know? So, <laughs> Ashley, yes girl. Good Victoria, I'm so glad. I haven't been around, I thought you were in Boston. I am in Austin, Texas for the winter. Um, Sunday, I'm right by Austin. I wish you could come. Why can't you come? Come Sunday. I'm so excited. I would be so excited if you came. Fatima, I take the pictures with me in the clothes, but I don't do lives. I just don't know what to post. Yay. I can do live videos, but pictures. So keep doing videos. Listen, you guys, like I said, do what feels best for you. Do, I don't post a ton of pictures of myself. I mean, I kind of do, I guess, on Instagram. I love video. So I just show up weekly on video. I'm very consistent for, I just got a, uh, I was looking at old photos and there was a picture from 2016 and it said, your videos have been viewed a hundred times from 2016. There's 53 of you on here. So I'm definitely gonna beat a hundred times <laughs> tonight. But that was two years ago. That was almost three, you know, almost, it was probably the fall of 2016. It just takes time. You have to be consistent. If there's one thing you guys, if you've been following me long enough, I am very consistent, very consistent. Um, got rid of my Facebook group, <laughs> good. Um, don't bring your numbers. <laughs> okay, good, hi guys. Taking my kids, oh, good. Okay, good, oh, you're with Family Sunday. Um, okay, so Rich Retailer Retreat. March 22nd to the 24th, 2019, here in Austin, Texas, um, at the Archer Hotel. We still have some um, of the discounted tickets available. We're still kind of running early bird pricing. Um, so get your tickets. We're gonna change it this weekend. Get your tickets with the early bird pricing. We have discounted room rates or you can stay wherever you want. Friday night, all day Saturday, Sunday morning, we're feeding you hors d'oeuvres. We're feeding you two breakfasts and a killer lunch on Saturday. You'll get to connect with people. Such high value with this retreat. Such amazing, it's gonna be an amazing experience. Um, and you'll get to spend the weekend with me. There aren't other keynote speakers. There aren't other people coming in to teach you. It's literally you and me like going deep. And if you get a lot of value out of all my free content, imagine what's gonna happen when you come and hang out with me for the weekend and really do the work. Some of you might be scared of that, but it's you're gonna leave feeling amazing. You're gonna leave feeling high as a kite. You're gonna leave feeling like, oh my God, I'm on top of the world. I know how to execute. I know what my plan is. I know what I'm doing. That is my intention for this retreat. So I hope you'll join me. If you have questions about it, you can always post here below and you can always send us a message at hello at stylishandsuccessful.com ask us questions about the retreat. If you're nervous about coming, don't be. The coolest people are coming. The nicest, if you guys were at my Vegas event last week, the nicest people. There's no drama in my group. There's no complaining. There's no low vibes. It is like a high vibe group and that's what the retreat's gonna be too. So just know that um, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to see you. If you have questions, let us know. Um, and hopefully you'll start working on some of this stuff now, creating a plan not doing all of it, and showing up in your boutique. Sending you lots of love. Go listen to today's podcast too. Oh, by the way. And uh, I'll see you guys really soon. Bye.